Hello everyone. In today's video, I want to talk about the two investment strategies that I use to build more passive income. Now I want to share these two investment strategies because who doesn't want to actually make money even while you're sleeping? So literally you can use these two investment strategies and actually build income like right now. Now these two strategies are best for busy professionals, if you have a young family, you have a life where you don't want to actually spend that extra time building a business, build more side hustles, or even manage tenants. I'll also talk about the pros and cons of each investment strategy and how much it takes to actually build $50,000 of passive income every single year in Canada. And at the end of this video, I also share how you can actually collect $50,000 tax-free in Canada. So make sure you stay to the very end. Hey everyone, just in case you don't know me, my name is Tracy. I'm a former engineer turned full-time investor managing a multi-million dollar investment portfolio in Canada. Now, if you're looking to build multiple streams of income, build your wealth and live your best life in Canada, then you must, must hit the subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get the latest and greatest videos coming to you every single week. Plus, it's free. Hey everyone, I just wanna do a brief pause and only take a few seconds. I wanna talk about the free resources that I have for you. Now I spent a lot of time building these resources because I wanna help more fellow Canadians to build more passive income because well, we didn't learn this at school. So be sure to check out the links below, the ultimate guide to dividend growth investing. And if you uh, are super keen and really wanna build your stock investing knowledge, there's also a free stock foundation course for Canadians. So be sure to check out the links below. So let's get back with the video. The first strategy is dividend growth investing. Now we are so lucky in Canada because we have a bunch of Canadian dividend growers. So these companies are blue chip mature companies that have been around for a very long time. Typically they are utilities, financial companies, or in the energy sector, but we have a lot of them in Canada. Now what makes these stocks very special is not only do they grow their dividend which is like basically paying you money every single year for many, many, many years, like decades, but also they've been growing their dividends every single year for the last five years. And they're called the Canadian dividend aristocrats. Now these are typically boring stocks. I don't mean boring in terms of their business model, but boring because the price action doesn't move up and down in the stock market very much because they're, well, they're pretty stable type companies and how you check the volatility of a company, meaning the price action going up and down, is just go to Yahoo Finance, go to check on the beta rating, and you wanna look for a beta of less than one, which means that it doesn't move as much like the average stock market, which is what typical like companies like TD Bank, Enbridge, uh, Fortis, all those companies fall in that bucket. Now, great example of a Canadian dividend grower is Fortis. So let's use Fortis as an example. So Fortis pays a yield of 3.5%. Now this company has also been paying dividends for decades and they've been growing their dividends for the last five consecutive years. I think in the past it was even double digits at one point and now they're saying that they're growing their dividends at least 6% per year for the next few years, which is like awesome. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. So the first pros that we have a lot of these in Canada, we are so lucky to have a lot of dividend growth stocks in Canada, which is amazing. Second thing is that they typically have low beta ratings, meaning that because they're mature blue chip companies, the stock price doesn't move up and down erratically like a Shopify stock. So if you're a cautious, uh, investor and you don't like a lot of price movement in your stock prices because you're in retirement you're, you're, or you're near retirement or you're just a cautious investor or you're just new to the stock market, well, we, you might wanna look at Canadian dividend growth stock. And next pro, and this is my favorite, is a great hedge in your entire stock portfolio. So if you are heavy into tech stocks and you want to, um, hedge your portfolio because obviously tech stocks and high growers don't actually do well in all market cycles because every stock market goes up and also goes down and over time it'll go up as long as your company grows, grows, grows and makes a lot of dough. But if you wanna hedge your portfolio to actually thrive and survive in any stock market, it's always wise to add dividend growth stocks in your portfolio because in a bear market or in a market that trades sideways, meaning the market's not going anywhere, or there's just a lot of fear in the market, 
Well, these type of stocks do amazing. They will become the rock stars in your portfolio because, they, well, there's a flight to safety. The, all the investors will get rid of their um, high growth stocks because they're not profitable and they'll sink some of their money into dividend growth stocks, which are more stable, more secure, like companies like Fortis is a gas and utility um, regulated company, which means they have fixed contracts, they collect reoccurring revenue. So you want, so they'll start, you'll start seeing a rotation of stocks going into dividend growth stocks. So this is why I'm saying this is a great, great addition to any stock portfolio to reduce the volatility and ensure that your portfolio survives and thrives in any stock market. Now let's talk about the cons. Well, obviously the first con is that, well, some of these yields are like not that great. It takes a ton of time to compound and let it work its magic. Because if you're looking to build $50,000 right now of passive income every single year, you're gonna need a lot of cash to actually do that. So it takes time to actually compound and build a dividend growth portfolio of $50,000 a year. Second con is, well, when you invest in dividend growth stocks, whether it's Canadian or American, but I'm gonna focus on Canadian, well, you're not gonna, ever hit home runs. Unless of course you hit, you buy them when the market crashes. Basically you could buy pretty much almost any stock in a market crash and would do okay as long as they actually are profitable company. But what I'm trying to get at is typically if you invest in a Fortis or a TD Bank, you're not gonna hit home runs. You're just expecting growth every single year in terms of compound growth, meaning the company grows, 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 and the stock price grows, grows, grows. Their earnings grow, meaning they actually are profitable and they continue to collect their profits every single year. Then you could just expect a steady eddy growth, but you're not gonna ever hit home runs, unless of course you bought it during the market crash. A third con, which I think not a lot of people talk about is, is that a lot of these old mature blue chip companies could get disrupted over time by technology. So if you think about it, something like telecommunications, we've got Telus, Bell Mobility, et cetera, where you know, they use uh, towers to actually provide cell phone service. Of course, there's not more than just cell phone service, there's internet and all that, but there's companies like Starlink, which is, and um, Amazon, which is sending satellites in space where you can actually get access to internet just uh, by, via satellites. So there's things that technology could disrupt a sector in the future. I'm not saying obviously this is going to happen. I'm just saying that you can't just say, a company is gonna stay that way for the next 50 to 100 years because it survived the last 100 years and did well. So I would always say that technology always has a risk of disrupting some of these sectors like telecommunications, like the bank sector with financial technology companies. So that's something to always think about. But I'm not saying that it's gonna happen anytime soon. I'm just saying you gotta watch out for it. Now you're probably wondering, okay, so how much does it take to actually create $50,000 of passive income. So using Fortis as an example, with a yield of 3.5%, which you can check on Yahoo Finance, you go to the dividend yield, you can see it's 3.5% as of today's video, because it fluctuates every single day, depending on the stock price. Using that, you just divide $50,000 divided by 3.5%, and you get, drum roll, 1.4 million. Now I know, I know, 1.4 million. That's like a lot of money. But there's a catch, well, a good catch, I'm not being a bad catch. Because as a Canadian dividend grower, if you're just willing to, say, set aside maybe $800,000 and put it all into Fortis and wait 10 years, well, with Fortis, they grow their dividends every single year. And if you use those dividends to put it into a dividend reinvestment program to keep continuing to buy more Fortis shares. So over the decade, you're gonna own more and more Fortis shares which are essentially free because the dividends are being used to buy those shares. Then over time, over a decade, you can potentially double your dividends, which is like music to everyone's ears. Who doesn't like free dividends over a 10 year period? But of course you have to invest a big chunk of money up front, but at least you don't have to invest 1.4 million up front right now to get $50,000 later on. So that's a cool way to double your dividends without putting a big, big chunk of money. Now the second strategy is real estate investment trust. So if you ever want to own real estate, because obviously if you believe that inflation's here to stay for the next couple of years, real estate's always a good hedge in your portfolio. 
but you don't want to manage tenants, well, you might want to look at real estate investment trusts. These are the type of companies that actually manage a portfolio of real estate and collect income every single year. So they have, they could have commercial properties, they could have industrial properties, they could have apartment complexes, they could even have retirement living homes. So there is a lot of options with real estate investment trusts, even in Canada. And the bonus is that they offer a little bit more yield, which means more moolah to you every single year. Now, great example right now is Smart Centers, which offers a yield a tad over 6%, depending on the day. Their anchor tenant is Walmart, and they build a bunch of malls, commercial real estate around their anchor tenant, which is Walmart, and they're even getting into residential units. Third advantage is if you're looking for pretty predictable income, like rental income is pretty predictable. Although I would say the covert crash kind of made a dent into that. But other than that, most of those companies have pretty predictable income as long as they rent out their units, then you can expect a pretty stable dividend distribution to you every single month because you can actually collect these REITs, their moolah every single month, which is something like a retiree or early retiree or someone who just likes collecting a little bit of income like me every single month. But let's talk about the cons because there's no free lunch. When you get a higher yield, there's always a trade-off and the trade-off is, well, a lot of these REITs are not dividend growers. That means if you get a 6% yield this year, you can expect just a 6% yield next year and for the next five years, unless the company does something drastically different and changes and transforms into a new company. But typically these companies don't do that. So you can expect a very boring distribution every single year. So inflation's at 8% every single year and the yield doesn't grow, it could get eaten up by inflation over time, especially if the stock price also doesn't go up because they're not growing there company every single year. So you got to be very, very careful with real estate investment trusts, which leads to my second con. You got to pick a company that actually can grow their portfolio every single year so that their stock price can grow every single year. Think about it. The more real estate they acquire, the more rental income they can collect, the more income that they could pass to you. The moment they stop doing that or they just make really terrible, terrible purchases, well, that could hit them in the butt because first they get into too much debt because in order to own real estate, you actually have to borrow money to own real estate unless they're super cash rich, but most companies borrow money to buy real estate. So they acquire more debt. You have to charge more rent. And if they can't lease out all those units or collect income in some other way, well, you could see how the distributions, the dividends every single month could get slaughtered just like it did in COVID. So I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm just saying this is one of the risks with owning real estate investment trusts. You got to choose a company that makes smart acquisitions that can charge more rent in the future so that they can pass through a lot of the profits to you every single month. Now let's talk about how much it would take to make $50,000 a year through REITs. So if we use Smart Center as an example, you take $50,000 divided by 6%, it would take $833,000 invested today to make $50,000 right now. Now, um, I wish I could say that you could invest a lot less and then collect $50,000 five years down the road. Unfortunately, because these companies typically are not dividend growers, meaning they don't grow their yields and their distributions every single year, you're capped. So you do need to invest a big chunk of money to actually get that $50,000 a year. So let's talk about how you can collect up to $100,000 tax-free. So in Canada, we are so lucky. We have the tax-free savings account, which is essentially the government giving us accounts where you can use these accounts, invest your moolah to collect more moolah tax-free. So in Canada, if you didn't know, each of us have up to $81,500 that we can invest in a TFSA to go buy stocks and invest that and collect more moolah tax-free. And if you have a partner, well, you just times that by two. In addition, we're so, so lucky in Canada that we have really, really great tax advantages when investing in Canadian companies. As if you invest in a Canadian dividend company like the Telus, the Fortis, the TD Banks of the world, in a non-registered account, you potentially can collect up to $50,000 tax-free as long as they are Canadian 
companies that pay dividends in a non-registered account. And of course, there's a catch to this. You can't collect any other income. So if you collect pension income, rental income, that unfortunately starts decreasing the amount of income you can collect in your Canadian dividend stocks tax-free. But hypothetically, you could collect up to $50,000 tax-free per person as long as you invest in Canadian dividend stocks in a non-registered account. So if you have a partner, well, your partner also doesn't collect a pension, doesn't collect rental income, and they're retired, and you invest a big chunk of money in Canadian dividend stocks, you could, through a couple, get up to $100,000 of dividends tax-free in Canada, which is an amazing strategy to have. We're so lucky to not only have the tax-free savings account, but we have these amazing tax advantages investing in Canadian companies in Canada. Now, if you want to read more about this, I'll insert a link in the description below about the Canadian tax brackets, and you can go do a deep dive on how this all works. But essentially, the strategy is you invest in Canadian dividend companies in your non-registered -regist account. Make sure you don't collect any other income to max out the $50,000 tax-free. Hey everyone, make sure you stay tuned for part two of this video where I share two other investment strategies that you can use to build your passive income in Canada and live off of these dividends every single year. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button to get the latest and greatest videos coming to you every single week. And it's free. I'll see you in the next video.